Awesome. Thank you, Courtney, and thank you all for joining us today for our near and practice management webinar. Um, today is a really great topic. We're super excited to have Salman Ahmed join us. Um, they're a great partner of Nierman Practice Management. And we've had so many requests, you know, as we've been ramping up our webinars over the last um, several weeks, and as we continue to provide content and um, engagement with, with the, the industry, uh, one of the most common questions that and requests that we've gotten is they want to learn more about um, you know what's new in the industry and specifically we've had a lot of requests for the new um, the Somnident Avant appliance. Um, they made a Somnident made a big splash at the end of last year with their new appliance and we've gotten a ton of great feedback from our clients that have um, been using it thus far. And so it's my great pleasure to um, introduce Lewis Myers, the Director of Sales for Somnimed, to um, get us started here. And uh, we know it's going to be a great topic. A lot of people um, have been asking for it, so we're excited. So with, with that said, we'll pass it on to Lewis. Thank you, John. And a uh, big thanks to Nierman for, for making all of this possible and all of the awesome presentations that you guys continue to do to keep everybody engaged. Um, I wanted to, uh, to welcome everybody to this webinar, um, introduce the colleagues that I have on this call with me. Our director of operations, Eric Cole is on this call. We are Hi, waiting, everybody. Hi, Eric. We are waiting for our worldwide VP of R and D Chris Bedford to join the call from Sydney, Australia. It is 5 AM in Sydney, 5 AM tomorrow in Sydney right now. Um, and, uh, I've been texting him on the WhatsApp, WhatsApp app, and I'm not getting a response just yet. So, um, yeah, I was really hoping Chris will be on. Hopefully, he will join us. Dr. Alexander Vaughn and Dr. Michael Pagano are here as well from Richmond, Virginia. Um, great guys. A lot of you guys know him, uh, know them, uh, running an incredibly successful practice there in Virginia, um, and really bring a, a wealth of experience as far as um, uh, using the new Avant device in, in their patients up there. So uh, as far as tapping into the, to the, to the brains of uh, dentists who have a lot of experience, these guys are, are uh, awesome additions to this call. Um, Eric, in lieu of Chris Bedford not being on the call or not being on the call yet, um, why don't I flip it to you and just kind of give a little bit of what we had wanted Chris to, to, to get into now, and that's a little bit about a, a, the concept and the birth of this product and how it came to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this device has been about 24 to 36 months in the making. Uh, we had to start from scratch. As you guys will see in this presentation, we, you know, this is our first CAD CAM device. Uh, we had to do testing on materials and soft liner. Uh, as you'll see, the strap is different from our usual devices. So uh, a lot of research and time went into this. You'll see some of that throughout this presentation. Um, but the concept was we needed something, as Chris had on his wall in his office, a mantra that the next device that we were going to fabricate, you know, as, as we always hear, is got to be smaller. It's got to fit better. It's got to be easier to use. It's got to be objective. Um, as far as measurement and calibration, it's got to be easy to use. Patients got to love it. So we've been using that as a mantra on the R&D side, developing products. And this, this was one of the, that kind of met all of those parameters. Um, and we have some data here and later in the presentation to share with you guys about that. Um, but this has been a long road. Uh, rest of the world kind of started with it. And then U.S., as John alluded to, that we are, uh, we launched September of last year. And it's been phenomenal since. So very excited to have share all this information with you guys today. You bet. Let's get right into the kind of the game plan for our time together today. Well, first, we'll uh, take you through a, a brief introduction of the Avant, uh, the device design, material composition, the functionality of the product, its unique character characteristics, uh, testing, evaluation, and feedback, um, updates and such, and then we'll get into a Q&A period at the end. So feel free to type in your questions into the 
into the into the text bar as we go along and Courtney will be kind of tabulating those. Let's get started off with uh, the video that we showed when we launched the product. Uh, give you a little bit of inside scoop. Somnamed introduces Avant, our latest innovation in sleep apnea treatment. Avant is our smallest, strongest, and most precise appliance that we've created. And it all starts with the design. We've achieved an incredibly slim design by reducing Avant to only the most essential components. The Avant uses an extremely tough and flexible polyamide strap. At just two millimeters thin, the strap subtly couples the appliance at a single anterior point. This creates a fulcrum, which comfortably preserves protrusion and limits the mouth opening, yet still provides a smooth, free, side-to-side -side and forward movement. To ensure the most precise fit, we have reimagined what digital design and precision manufacturing can be. The durable outer layer of Avant was accomplished through a PMMA resin, known for its strength, lightweight characteristics and biocompatibility. We then customized it to blend a new highly cross-linked formula that produced the strongest material we've ever used. A soft inner layer made from SMH B-Flex material completes Avant with unsurpassed comfort. The result is an incredibly smooth, pristine and highly translucent outer surface, machined and measured in submicron values yet with premium comfort and the confidence of the right first time fitting on the inside. Avant is digitally manufactured from end to end. A multi-axis laser marks each unique serial number, followed by an automated inspection, ensuring flawless quality for every arch of every case, every time. We are proud to introduce Avant, our smallest, strongest and most Precise appliance for sleep apnea treatment. We absolutely love it, and we know your patients will too. Fantastic. Okay, moving right along. I, Chris Bedford will be joining us. He's about, about five minutes away from dialing in. Chris, if you can hear me, speak up. If not, then we're go, we'll continue. He's not on just yet. He's not on just yet. Okay, very good. Okay, device design, material composition, and function. Turn this over to Eric. Yeah, absolutely. So, as you guys saw from the video, <clears throat> the design with this is meant to be just very simple. We have the two splints, upper and lower, and then we have the strap. Uh, it's attached by a strap clip, as you see here, on the upper anterior. Um, we'll show you how that kind of fits and removes here in a little bit. Uh, and then on the lower, it connects with that hinge on, on the lower. Uh, it has to be about 90 degrees to have that strap come apart. Um, but all in all, it's a durable PMMA. It's milled. It's our own PMMA and our proprietary SMH B-Flex soft liner on the inside. Um, and then the strap is, as you heard from the video, it's a very flexible and durable polymide that allows us to, you know, keep that shape uh, and conform to the patient's arch. So we can go to the next slide, Lewis. We'll talk more about the materials and the composition of the materials of the device. So as we talked here, you know, we, we've now introduced this CAD CAM device. So that gives us that more durable acrylic out there. Uh, has lower residual monomer to it. Um, and then we've also figured out how to put our soft liner into this acrylic CAD CAM device. It's our proprietary soft liner, um, and it actually will have a better adherence than our other products as far as the liner will be. Uh, we've done some neat little tricks to it to keep it from delaminating as well, uh, beveling the edges. And then the strap. The strap's a, a very durable polymide that will allow us to keep that patient's protrusion. And then there's some unique things about that mechanism as well. Um, so just getting this 510K cleared, we are a medical device company. So we have to get through these ISO certifications for sensitivity and irritation. Uh, so those have obviously gone through. 
Uh, and then the beautiful thing about this device with no metal, it's got no nickel, latex, or bisphenol A. So overall, very, very happy with this product. Very, very happy with this product. So we'll get into this. Yeah, so I'd like to just kind of jump um, in a little bit here. Um, absolutely. Yeah, so, so uh, thank you all for having us on. My name is Dr. Pagano. This is my partner, Dr. Vaughn. Um, we started our practice, I don't know, we got together about a year and a half ago and started talking about a partnership, forming a dental sleep medicine, oral facial pain kind of focused practice. And um, the company was formed about a year ago mm -hmm. and we started seeing patients here, I don't know, June or July of last year. And everything we wanted to do with our dental sleep medicine practice was kind of with a medical model in mind. Um, we both had a lot of very background working in different clinics, different dental sleep medicine settings. And we both kind of felt, you know, looking at our medical colleagues that are seeing one, two, 300 patients, new patients a month for sleeping disorders, um, it's kind of no wonder CPAPs are, are very popular. It's a pretty simple solution. Um, everything that we've formed our clinic in is we want one doctor, one dental sleep doctor to be able to treat 100 patients a month. And in order to do that, we needed to have kind of simple processes. Um, we've used lots of different types of devices. Uh, right now, we've been using the Avant pretty heavily. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me on here. Um, we're not on anyone's payroll or anything. Um, but we've gone back and forth with this device. And what we keep finding is it allows the patients to adjust it pretty easily at home. Um, when you look at these straps, they come in a strap kit. I have one available here. Uh, right there. A whole bunch of different straps. Very easily labeled here for patients. And as far as advancing it goes, it's just take one strap off and put on the next. Um, so we can tell a patient, hey, you're on band zero right now. To change the band, you just kind of open it up. It can pop right off. It's a little bit more skinny at this white area. This is our model that we use all the time. And it pops off there, and then you put a new strap on. So as far as instructions to patients, it's very simple of what to do. Um, we've used a ton of herps devices in the past, which are a great appliance. They're PDAC approved. So for Medicare patients, it's one of your only options. But we have found some patients can kind of advance those uneven. And that's just not possible with this device because there's only one point. Um, so that's one of the reasons we've liked it a lot in our practice. Anything to add on that? Yeah. No, I mean, I think you, you have a lot of it. And, and two, I think adding in, this is, this is kind of every aspect that, that I know Eric uh, is going to talk about here is, is honestly, I mean, we opened our practice before the event was uh, released or announced even, so we didn't even know about it. Um, but it's kind of what we were looking for um, to get everything together. Now, my background comes from uh, prior to, to going into oral facial pain was very heavy on the CREX side. Um, and I love Rella uh, Christensen had a, a comment that she made when she was looking at, um, you know, crowns. She wants the Volks crown. This this idea of, you know, the, the Volkswagen car was the car for every German. Um, and, 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 you know, the idea in, in CAD CAM world was how do we get a material that can be the crown for every patient? And that's what we were trying to find on the sleep side. So what's the sleep appliance for the majority of patients? What, what, what are the pain points? How do we get rid of those? Um, and, and I think everything that, that Eric especially is going to highlight here um, is or Eric or, or Chris, now I see he's, he's on the call too, um, are, are the, the key issues that these were what we were waiting on in our practice to get going to get that appliance that we can put in almost every single patient every single time. Um, and so it, it, like I was saying, we need to do it. Um, our goal is to get 100 patients per doc in our practices. So to do that, we need predictability um, from day one that just kind of works. Um, and so I, I think that's why we've, we've loved the event. But, um, but yeah, what, I want to hop back into the... Yeah, and digital. We've been no, digital yeah. all the way. Um, we have oral scanners in this practice. Um, that's the way for us to get 
repeatedly great impressions every time. And if there's something wrong with the impression, you can go in and fix it very quickly. Um, I, I believe our hold rate with Somnomad, and one of the things I like about them is they'll put your case on hold if something's not right. Um, and that's what really allows us the confidence that a device is going to be made and fitting correctly at delivery right away. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate that. Yeah, thank you Chris, both. Welcome on uh, the call. First, yeah, Chris Bedford, welcome. Thanks for joining. Sorry, it's so early for you, but thank you for joining. Greatly appreciate it. Not at all. Glad to be here. Thank you. Not at all. Glad to be here. Thank you. Chris, I'd like cool. to. I'd, I'd, I'd love to, Chris, just to introduce himself. Chris, we've got well over us. Just to introduce himself. Am I getting a reverb or is that me or is that somebody else? Am I getting a reverb or is that me or is that somebody else? Anyway, Chris, I want to turn it over to you and just give you a chance to introduce yourself to the well over 100 uh, sleep dentists uh, that we have here on the call. Uh, why don't you tell the group a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with the company, and a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of your personal story behind this and this uh the new avant sure um certainly so first of all my apologies for being a little late that wires crossed it's it's 5 a.m here in sydney and i was told six so we've um i've gone outside and pulled the pulled the uh, sun up a bit earlier so we can all get started um i've been with some of them since we started uh, employee number one since we started. Um, about 16 years ago now and about 16 years um, now it's been it's been that complete ride um it's been that from, complete ride from startup um, to what is now a, a global medical device company in 26 different countries and um with the support of everybody on this call and others we are hoping to change um the paradigm for comfortable and effective um, snoring and sleep apnea treatment. After collecting feedback from customers for so many years, the, the concept for um, the Avant device really was about simplicity. Um, we wanted to listen to everybody from the person who makes the appliance, fitting the appliance, wearing the appliance, prescribing insurers and so on. And uh, I've told the story that from from concept i had these notes up on my wall um in in my office and there were five or six notes that, that stood out and essentially it, it, it boiled down to can we make this smaller thinner stronger better easier whatever that is for for the interpretation of those individual users and so being a, a medical device company we had to step through ISO 13485, the different uh, rigorous compliances. But at the same time, we learned very quickly that we had to move away from traditional manufacturing. We had to create a, a completely new digital, digitized platform that for customers who are willing to adopt um, new technologies and move into the digital space, we knew that we would have to uh, scale up and be able to work with people in a faster, more predictable, more precise environment. And, and that's really what Avant is. We took away all of the unnecessary pieces and crystallized it down to essentially what is just three components, a strap, an upper, and a lower plate. Uh, there's a lot more behind it than that, but we wanted to, that the, the clinicians were able to issue a device right first time. If the Avant doesn't seat drop in, basically without the dentist even needing to touch it. You, you should be able to hand this over to the patient and uh, visually instruct them to, to close into it. If, if it doesn't do that, something has gone wrong. So we focus very much on our side at the process level, ensuring that we understood how many microns and thickness of material, how, how tight, loose, and in between that should be. We created whole new technologies in uh, being able to retention test. So that is every appliance that we make has been physically seated and removed from both physical and virtual models using some artificial intelligence that we developed. We, we, we collected feedback on the amount of retention that each appliance uh, seats with and, and takes to remove. 
and we created a scattergram and collected where's the sweet spot that people like for retentive enough to stay in, but not too tight so as to be difficult to get out. And then we followed the people over a number of years, up to two years, and we measured that retention and how that changes over time because an appliance seeded on day one is not the same retention as uh, an appliance at day 10 or, or day 30 for that matter. Um, uh, like a new pair of shoes, they wear in. So we collected all of this information. Um, I'm not sure that we've done a great job so far of sharing everything that we've, we've done, but what we have tried to do is ensure that we get a right first time precise fitting and that we make ourselves available at any time to help people um, achieve that right first time fitting and, and to understand how to get that repeatedly. So Chris, you said something there that, that really strikes with me. So um, a little while ago, I was working in a medical clinic. So this was a sleep company that was doing a lot of oral devices. I think they were doing sometimes 100 to 130 appliances a month, a ton of them. And uh, coming in as a dentist, I was telling them supplies they needed, how to kind of revamp and, and, and straighten things out, whatnot. And I was telling the respiratory tech, you know, I'm going to need burrs, acrylic, because um, at delivery, sometimes we have to do adjustments to things. And he looked at me just very confused, almost crazy. He was like, well, why would you need to do all that stuff? If it just, if it, I mean, if it's not right, just send it back and have them fix it. And sometimes I think in dentistry, because we're so talented to customize things ourselves, and it's part of our training, um, we kind of get a little complacent with, you know, well, we'll just make it work. We'll just make it work. We'll just make it work. Now what we have found, especially with the advantage of digital impressions um, and great digital records, everything should fit right away. And this is almost like a metal framework for a partial. If it's not going right in, something's wrong. And this is going to be with the patient for a long time, so it needs to be remade. And that's how we run our practice right now. And I think we've only sent back... I don't know, one or two avants in total out of all of them that we've did. Um, one tool Cheers. that's helped us out tremendously with light is your SOM gauge. Um, a lot of, oh, two. Eric is saying we've sent back two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> a lot of people are familiar with a George gauge. Uh, if you're going to get any of these, make sure you get the autoclavable type. Otherwise, one of your assistants will put it through an autoclave, and it's an expensive $50 bill. Not that we would have any idea what that is. Yeah. Um, but if you're not familiar with these SOM gauges, what's kind of slick about it is, yes, they have the minimal kind of thickness to them, um, but they also have this little slider here, and I use this all the time, and you can loosen this up and increase the vertical very easily for the patients. I would say my average vertical is probably five or six millimeters in the anterior. And that's because um, coming from doing a ton of Sarah crowns and designing dentistry myself, uh, I kind of know the benefit of giving yourself enough room to actually design and manufacture something of high quality and high strength. Um, so, so I don't hesitate at all to have my starting vertical in the anterior being five to seven millimeters. Um, and in the oral facial pain world, uh, I believe the best average vertical on a splint eight millimeters. is eight millimeters. Um, so that's something I think if we do a little bit better on our bites of opening things up just a little bit more, it'll probably turn around to better devices all the way around. Yeah. And I think part of the reason, you know, I mean, like I said, Eric's given us a hard time because we, we had two returns so far. Um, and, and again, we only return, or, or I should rephrase that, we return when it doesn't fit first time. So we don't adjust appliances. So if, if, if at the end of the day, I mean, the FDA, it's a class two medical device. We don't have any desire to adulterate these appliances. It's illegal to do that. Um, and, and so if, if they don't fit, then they're not done correctly, whether that was my scan that was wrong, which is certainly um, probably a, a lot of the, the issues when we do have them, um, or if it was made wrong, either way, it needs to be remade. Um, and, and, and so we've sent back two. Part of the reason why I've only had to send back two, though, is I think uh, using a gauge that makes sure that we have the opening. 
Um, and, and again, we don't get me wrong, I, I don't love having to pay more for the gauge, but it is what it is. It, it costs me two bucks for a gauge that works every time uh, versus saving some money. But but I'll say again, this kind of all wraps up into why this appliance works well, is it's designed as long as you, you go through your steps and you do honestly just, I would say the fundamentals of dental sleep medicine, the appliance is gonna work. And that's because of all the work I did to, to engineer it on the, on the front end. So, so it's still pretty normal for me to retake my bite. I'll probably take one to three bites on every patient. Cause I'm, you know, I still wanna make sure the midlines are straight, off, straight on. Uh, there's some devices that are more uh, susceptible if that midline's off, you could have a, a catastrophic failure. Um, the Avant seems to be a little bit more forgiving. Um, from a clinical side though, I'd still make sure you're doing everything sound, make sure those midlines are, are, are square to start. Um, at delivery, we're not touching these, I don't wanna have to touch them. Um, if someone comes back at a follow up and says an area is too tight, okay, yeah, then we can adjust it. Um, a little tip we found, when I need to adjust one of these liners, um, I don't like using a burr. I find a burr kind of gums up a little bit. Um, what I have found really helpful are these kind of scotch bright um, type lab devices. Um, run these on high speed and it'll smooth it down nicely um, without having to pick out anything. It works well. Excellent. Yeah, that, that was a great little feel there. We're right into the, the thick of this. So um, I think we're all on the same page. This should be simple for, for you guys to use with patients. It should be easy and it should fit first time. Uh, and as Chris said, it, and that's something that we see now is if it doesn't fit right away, there's something wrong that we can look into and, and we'll show you. But this whole new platform has given us that ability to be data enriched and have all the information on our side uh, and Chris can go into that here in a little bit. Um, we're going to go back to the straps here. The straps are going to be very simple for everybody. Um, when you send us your case, we will fabricate your device and we will determine the strap set for you. It'll be a large, medium, or small strap set. And you will start at the zero and you'll get one millimeter backwards and eight millimeters forward, each strap being a one millimeter advancement. Mm -hmm. Um, so actually, we have a quick video here next to show you how those are fitted and removed. Uh, and so we'll go through that, Luz. How are the straps placed on or taken off? To attach a strap, hold the upper plate and press the white collar of the strap into the strap clip. Slide the strap around until the center is inside the strap clip. Hold strap so it is upright. Press the right strap hole over the right hinge. Hold finger over the right hinge and repeat for the left hinge. Rotate the strap down so the plates meet. To remove a strap. Rotate the strap until it is upright. With the strap upright, pull it off the right hinge. Repeat for left hinge. Slide strap around until strap clip is at the white marking on the strap. Pull the strap out of the strap clip. All right, as easy as that. Um, look, as you fit and remove those straps, you will be protruding or retruding the mandible forward. So to move forward, as we said, you'll start at, for example, in this presentation, there's an S. So the small strap kit was supplied we started at the S0 position, uh, and to move forward, we would go to the S1, S2, S3, S4, as you see here now, would be four millimeters forwards. Or if we wanted to go back one, uh, we'd do the negative one strap, kit, and that would give us that one millimeter advancement backwards. So uh, it's very simple. They're one millimeter increments, um, and just as you fit and remove them, uh, Vaughn and Pagano, you guys have done many, very many of these. Uh, how's your use with these straps and protruding and retreating with patients and what, what's your experience so far? So, so it's been real simple. Um, typically what we're doing right now is we're seeing patients about three weeks after a delivery um, and we're doing about one week at a time change your strap. So we, we want to keep it as simple as we can. Um, <clears throat> we were doing, you know, we've done other devices where we're saying, you know, 
one turn a day or five turns every five days. And you get some patients that were over ambitious. They come back three weeks later and they're eight millimeters advanced. Um, and then others where, you know, they weren't doing the advancement they needed to be. Here with the Avant, we're just saying one week, one band. Um, when we see them three weeks later, uh, there's not really an opportunity to over protrude. We tend to start people in a pretty safe protrusion with the Avants because there's such a large advancement that's available. Um, one thing, we don't get as caught up with the millimeter of advancements here. Um, and I don't even talk with patients about millimeters of advancement per se. It's just, we're gonna find the correct band for you. And um, the reason for that, what we have found in the Avance, after someone's wearing a band for a couple of weeks, probably about one or two weeks, the bands kind of conform a little bit to the person's arch. There's probably a little bit of stretching that's going on with them, but there's so many bands to use. If there's a little bit of stretching, that's okay. Move to the next band and that will stretch the correct position. What we like about that is it seems to be very friendly to our patient's muscles. Um, because we're doing such a high volume of these, it's pretty rare that we're having patients coming in with muscle pain. Um, pretty rare events, maybe one a week at the most. And I, I think that is due to the amount of freedom that these bands are allowing. I've used other band appliances in the past and kind of had similar results. I've had other devices in the past that can kind of have hard stops, which can be great. They can give you a, a position you want, but I've found sometimes I can flare up some muscle issues. Um, so it's kind of plus give and take uh, with everything that we have here. Anything to add on that? No, I think that's that's about it. I'm, I'm I apologize too. I'm getting a copy of the uh, the Henry Shine page for the the um, brush that Dr. Gano had mentioned we use, so I can show that in the chat for everyone. Yeah, and those come in a couple of different um, intensities. I think I used the the high polishing one um, when I use those on a nose cone or straight cam piece on slow speed. Um, we use just a lab yeah. hand piece in the office. Um, but the strap advancement's pretty pretty straightforward. We've had a couple of patients where we've had to go outside of the chosen algorithm. Um, the, the one case that comes to mind was an extreme V arch um, the patient had. And so I think yep. the bands, just the physics of it, we weren't getting enough advancement that we needed and we needed to move to an even, even shorter band to start getting them more advanced. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's exactly what we, we're using and doing this for, and, and actually the next slide shows that. We're gonna show you guys the full range of motion for the device. You'll be given a specific strap, but for example, if you needed to get further protruded, um, there's that option to go to the next strap kit. So this next video will show you how those straps inter intertwine with one another. So there's actually a much larger range of motion of 20 millimeters, you're just given the eight millimeters of protrusion in your one strap kit. So Lewis, if you want to play that next video. Somnident Avant's novel advancement mechanism involves the interchange of different length straps to provide protrusion. Higher number straps advance the mandible and lower number straps provide retrusion of the mandible. So very simple little forward backward movement based off of your uh, different straps and, and what's provided initially. Um, you always have that ability to go forwards or backwards um, and move on to the next strap kit if needed. Um, that's really it for as far as the outline of the device and the design characteristics. And, and now I'll kind of turn it over to Chris, who, uh, as we as you heard, is kind of the initiator of this and it's, it's his baby behind the scenes with us. And there's a lot of unique differences with the bond and first for us. So I'll let him kind of delve into that and give you guys some background and also where we're going. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> certainly the, we set out to, as I mentioned, create a platform upon which the entire process from the very first scan uh, chair side through to seating of the appliance. We wanted to, ensure that we had a fully visual, traceable, measurable and object 
collective set of data, digital data, traveling the whole way through that manufacture chain. And to leverage um, what is arguably uh, one of the greatest advantages in material science that we offer in the dental sleep medicine world, which is our uh, B-flex soft lining material. We had to work out a way how to machine or mill uh, soft liners. So that was one of the very first, um, after we had conceived the, the design with the strap and, and the plates. So we, we delved into uh, collaborating with, mostly with some um, third party colleagues in Europe and we came up with a, a unique process, a now patented process for efficiently machining the soft lining. So um, very quickly, what we do is we, we take a solid, um, highly cross-linked, again, a custom material, PMMA um, block of, of um, resin. And we machine out the, the intaglio. We create a cavity first, about one millimeter bigger than than the arch um, than we actually need and then uh, we we developed a whole new process for um, pressing in the b flex material into that cavity then we um, heat process okay so it's a it's a heat activated material in the pressure vessel we take that back out so it's still in the block it's got the b flex lining now as a solid and we take that whole piece and we put that back into the milling machine. So it's, it's almost, if you will, a two stage um, milling process. And that is how we've been able to achieve um, extremely high precision, yet with a, with a soft lined material. Um, that's completely unique. It's a world's first um, and we have patents over that. That's what's giving um, what I think you're seeing chair side with the deliveries. Um, that to a large extent is what's giving you the, the right first time fitting, certainly a large part of it. Um, coupled with that, I think everybody's pretty well versed on, on the advantages of um, CAD and CAM. CAD gives us a level of precision that um, we, you just can't achieve repeatedly in a traditional handmade device. So to ensure that that was actually the case, what we did is we, we developed another process, which is, um, it is 100% inline inspection. And so what we mean by that is when you send us your original intraoral scan, or if you send us your, your uh, physical gypsum or impressions, and we've converted that um, digitally using a benchtop scanner into CAD, we go through and we produce the device um, in, in almost a fully automated uh, fashion. And when we get to the end of the process, and we have the physical product, um, we don't visually make an inspection and, and, and tactile feel the device um, subjectively, as is the case in traditional manufacturing. We actually take the finished product, we, we um, put a proprietary scan uh, material over the, 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 the parts. We put that back into, again, a proprietary scanning process and we re-digitize the physically produced device. And then we take what we've got as the final scan of the physical part, and we compare that back to your original scan that you've supplied to us and create a heat map, if you will, looking for the precision of fit between the fitting surface and your original scan. And this ensures that at any time we are shipping um, products that are precise they're within the tolerances that we know to be delivering right first time fitting and as the third point says there uh, the precision of fit is um, three it, it, it can be up to five times more accurate than a handmade device and all the variance that goes into that and and <clears throat> that helps us with manufacturing that helps us um, scale up meet demand but i think arguably the most important part is that with an with a incredibly rich digital history of what we've produced, we are better able to predict the future needs uh, for our appliances. So that is, um, how thick should the appliance be? How tight should the appliance be? I see a couple of questions in, in the, 
the call log here about can we add a breathing hole? Can we add a ramp? Can we make it tighter or looser? The answer to all those questions is yes. Uh, we can do those things and, and better than just being able to do it, um, we're able to know before we send the appliance out. Um, again, coming back to one of the earlier comments, we know how much vertical dimension we need. We can visually, objectively communicate that to and from the clinician in CAD with images. We can have a call like we are now. Now, Eric is um, very good at, at and his team getting on um, calls and, and talking through with customers who are, who are new to an appliance or our platform or have uh, special requests um, for, for particular options. So uh, all of these things give us, um, add to the unique difference of working on a CAD CAM platform, but with an appliance that is um, extremely easy to use. It's very simple. Customers, patients, dentists get it, so to speak. Um, and we just see that we have far fewer problems. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, returns or if the returns have occurred. Um, it's primarily due to the fact of a miscommunication between um, ourselves, Somnamed and, and the customer about what was originally requested. Um, and, and from all of this, <clears throat> we are using this rich data source um, to consistently feed into our algorithm for, um, importantly, what is the preferred level of retention and um, you know, size and dimension inside of the mouth. So these really couple to give us what are the unique differences for Avant. Certainly another one of those unique differences is the mechanism of action um, and what happens anatomically when the mouth uh, begins to open a little bit. So uh, Chris, again, turning this back over to you, um, uh, giving you an opportunity to, uh, to explain this to, to our listeners here as well. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, so um, I, I'd love to be able to sit here and tell you uh, that, that it, it struck us like a bolt of lightning, uh, this design, and that it should be an anterior, anteriorly located um, a fixing point. Um, actually, like so much good R&D, um, this actually, this happened by chance. When we were <clears throat> looking at, at and, and conceiving designs, we knew that before we go back to the market with a new product, we would need to rigorously uh, study the, the appliance and the design in th third party independent um, and, and ideally regionally uh, um, differently located um, areas. And one of the very first things that we found was we were, we were getting uh, sleep study reports with on average better results than what we had seen in, in what had been uh, wind-based devices and herb style devices. And it wasn't immediately clear to us until we started getting greater numbers through. And what we, were, what we found was <clears throat> the Avant is completely unique because it has an anteriorly located uh, fulcrum when, it's, when, when you're holding the mouth together. So <clears throat> when, you, when you look sideways, um, the strap attaches anteriorly at a single point and comes back to two posteriorly located fixing elements. And if the patient tends to um, open during their sleep, the rotation of the mandible is away from the pharynx due to the upper, upper anteriorly located point. So the lower is, if you will, opening but coming forward as opposed to um, wing style devices where the lower is able to counter rotate back against the pharynx. And um, this has shown in, in the, the early studies that we've done, uh, those patients are now coming up to about two years of wear. Um, and we've, we've demonstrated, and I think we have a slide later on showing the uh, statistically significant improvement over um, other designs that are um, that, that we've used historically. Let me flip it over Hi. to Dr. Zvon and Pagano and ask, do you guys have anything to add here? I mean, Dr. <clears throat> Vaughn, I know that you sleep 
you sleep with an Avant in, in your mouth every night. Uh, wondering if you guys have anything to add? Yeah, although how do you know what I sleep with it every every night? It's a little... Well, you told me. It's a little creepy there, but uh, no. <laughs> it's not a secret. No, yeah, no. So I, I use a, a, an Avant uh, personally. I mean, I've used... Boy, so Tap3 was my first appliance as a, as a young 20-something-year-old. Um, and I think first experience is always, you know, uh, something you cherish. So I still actually like my my tap, but um, sadly that, uh, you know, Thermacryl eventually fell apart. So, um, but I, I've worn those, Narvals, Herps, um, and so now I'm wearing an Avant, and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been a really good appliance to kind of get used to. It's, it's um, you know, I, so I, I came from Herps Advance, but I was already used to the, the soft liner, um, which was um, probably the, the biggest difference I've found between, uh, you know, something like a thermocryl lined appliance and the, the B-Flex is there's definitely a difference there um, in, in terms of what feels like stability and change over time. I, I'm sure there are actual studies that, that show that, but I don't know. Um, but, but it just certainly myself feels that way. Um, but it's it's been a fun appliance to get to use. Uh, it's, it's been fun to get to kind of joke with patients and go over the mistakes I've made um, with it, which, you know, it's a simple appliance, so you shouldn't be able to make mistakes, but you can. Um, we all at some point put it together backwards or upside down. Um, and so I kind of joke with my patients about that and show them that. But other than that, I don't run into the same issues I ran into with, with herps or, or, or adjustable dorsals where you're dealing with kind of the, the either, let's call them people going down the wrong road where, where they end up one side versus the other. Um, and, and it's also hugely easy to kind of diagnose and treat over the phone. When a patient calls you, it's what strap are you in? You know, is it strap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? And, and of course, we have it written our software, but I don't have to track. They're at eight turns on the right in a, uh, you know, Great Lakes Herbst so, versus a 10 turns on the left in a Somnomet Herbst and trying to remember which mechanism adjusts which way. And, and, and it, I, I could complain for hours about kind of what we put up with on, on appliances that we allow to be the normal that we would never put up with with the rest of dentistry. Um, but, but kind of the ease of that adjustment and knowing that, for example, on this appliance, I don't use many elastic straps because it opens forward. I don't need to worry about that mandible rotating backwards like I do in a Herbst. Um, and so it's, it's kind of handy to, to know that I've got a drawer now full of elastic straps I'll never need. So, and we demonstrate that. So we still do a lot of Herbst. If, if you're a Medicare patient and you require a device on a... PDAC list and you're going to go through your insurance, that's what you need to get. And <clears throat> there was a study published not too long ago that showed a Herps device is more effective, meaning patients will have a lower AHI when they use elastics for it. And I'll demonstrate this to all my patients, why they need to use it. And I'll just grab a model and show them in a Herps type device, when you open, your jaw can fall backwards as you're sleeping and your muscle tone is decreasing. And I'll physically show them this and let them know this is why we're putting the rubber bands on there. That's gonna help your jaw stay in a therapeutic position. If you counter that kind of with what an Avant is doing due to that anterior um, point, as somebody is losing their muscle tone during sleep and relaxing, if their jaw opens at all, it's actually going to kind of open forwards. And it's not opening backwards like it is on a Herbst. Uh, the one instance is the Avants do have hooks for rubber bands. Sometimes I'll still put rubber bands on a patient if they're complaining of any dry mouth or they we're trying to get better nasal patency. And um, it's a kind of an easy kind of, uh, it makes sense to a patient if you tell them we're going to put rubber bands on there. And it's available on the Avant. If you're using a Herbst, Definitely put rubber bands on all of your appliances. It's documented in the literature that those work better that way. Moving right along, continuing on with some unique differences with this, uh, with the Avant. Eric or Chris, you got this? Yeah, Chris, you wanna? Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm still seeing, um... I'm still seeing um, Dr. Vaughn and Pagano. We can keep talking yes. here. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the slide, 
the slide we're on now, Chris, is the is the optimized fit, greater dimensional precision of the fit surface. Um, we also measured that the reduction from our standard uh, wing and coupling device, the flex and the fusions, how we've reduced that size by about 30%. Yeah, keep uh, keep going, uh, Eric, because I'm, I'm trying to get okay. back to the, the presentation. Yeah, no worries. Australia takes a while, goes backwards, right? So, um, yeah, look, this is one of the big things with us is in this whole platform that Chris was talking about, the the hockey puck acrylic, the PMMA that milled, where allowed it allows us to reduce the overall size by about 30%. Uh, and then in our flexual strength testing, this material is also 18% stronger. Uh, so this has been a big help for us as, as less breakage, fractures, nothing like that is happening. Um, and then it's a lot smaller. I mean, uh, Dr. Vaughn, you just talked about how you wore a Herbst Advance and now you've worn a Vaughn. Uh, overall size, how do you feel the difference between any of our other products and, and now the Avant? Um, so, so honestly, in my mind, if, as long as it's not a dorsal, it's comfortable. Um, so so I, I don't like, so for example, you say your other products, like I, I don't love, I, I've never done a sound of my dorsal. Um, right. That I've just been like blown away, hey, this is the most comfortable finds ever because the dorsals, I mean, they just add bulk. And half the time the fin is right on, on uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's impinging, tissue will get caught in it. Um, it. It just causes issues in my mind. So it's, to me, a, a Herbst, uh, an, an Avant, even a Tap, all feel very similar when made well. Um, certainly there's a difference in, in bulk, but, but like Pagano said earlier too, my, my occlusal guards have eight millimeters of, of occlusal separation. So um, I, I don't get too as worried about the bulk size as, as much as I used to, I think as I've done, more and more uh, what we would, I think, think of as large appliances without patients complaining, without patients having issues. Um, once we as dentists stop telling our patients they're not gonna like the treatment, um, then it's, it's amazing how much better the treatment goes when we actually just let them discover whether they like it or not. And I'm not saying you lie to your patient, I'm just saying I don't, I try not to bias them anymore um, with what I, think would be the issues, if that makes sense. So we have a saying in our clinic, and we kind of remind each other of this, especially when we go off on tangents, try not to dentist. And what we mean by that is, you know, don't put your bias onto a patient. This is a medical device. It's for a medical condition. It's something the patients need. Um, we don't sell treatments to patients. We don't, you know, if you go to a lot of dental um lectures, there'll be talks about how to get to yes and how to get case acceptance. We don't do that in our clinic. You know, they're, they're referred to us by their medical physicians to get a specific type of treatment, and we're going to go off our professional judgment of what they need. So for my patients that are getting a Herbst, kind of my line that I get with that is this is a great, excellent device that allows your jaw to move in any direction except backwards, but then I kind of show them how it can open backwards a little bit and tell them to get the rubber bands on it. And same thing with the Avants. Yes, the Avants are a little bit slimmer. Anecdotally, they are more comfortable. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily something we need to absolutely zero in on. I wouldn't feel comfortable telling a patient they need to be in a slimmer appliance and that being the overall only thing I'm caring about. I want somebody to be in a great device right. that's going to last three to five years, easy for them to use, can maintain their position, and made by a company that if there's issues, I know is going to support anything that we need. Um, so yes, the slimmer devices are good. They're generally more comfortable for patients. But I think as clinicians, it's up to us to kind of coach our patients and give them the confidence that, yes, you are going to do great with this device. So I, I, the, the re reason I bring that up, I caution people from selling devices, so to speak. Um, I'm not a big fan of going away from one type of device that insurance doesn't cover to sell a device the other way. Um, but that's a practice management conversation. Guys, let's move right along and get into some of the, uh, the data. Um, uh, that supports the Avant. There were three major trial sites uh, in Australia, in the Netherlands, and in Belgium. Um, 
and we'll get into uh, some of the supporting literature and some of the supporting data. Chris, can you see the screen yet? I can, I've worked that out, thank you. Okay, we'll turn it over to you. <clears throat> sure, so we, we began in, um, yeah, almost, almost two years ago now in Belgium with Professor Brahm. Uh, he was the first pilot site to investigate about, um, he did, uh, by my recall, <clears throat> he did about 30 patients. And I, I distinctly recall um, that the, this was an absolute, he, he runs a very busy practice um, through the, uh, through uh, the hospital system there, which is a, a heavily socialized system. So they get a tremendous care. If you need to see an ENT or you need to see a sleep physician or you need to see whoever, you get immediate access and they're all under one roof. So he has a, a wonderful flow of, of patients. Um, and he just took the next 30 patients uh, consecutively that would have come through his clinic. So um, the data is all there. We can share that with you later on. But if, if you can see it to the top right hand corner. Um, yeah, indeed, there is um, in this slide to the left hand side, um, there is a, a chart which which shows um, categorically the, the market improvement of from baseline down to um, you know, the majority of patients getting under 10 AHI. Now that that study was using, <clears throat> we didn't control their baseline um, PSGs. So some of the patients had a full PSG. Some patients had home sleep tests. All patients were followed up using a, a home sleep test unit afterwards. So um, not as rigor not as rigorous as, as a full PSG versus full PSG. But the results are clear that uh, all bar one patient got an improvement of some sort, and the vast majority of patients. Um, were down under 10 AHI. So this was, <clears throat> this was distinctly different to what we had been used to seeing, <clears throat> which typically in, in a rigorous trial was the classic 33% of people get a full response, 33% getting a partial, and, <clears throat> and the other 33% um, getting subclinical uh, mm -hmm. uh, results, but however, still some degree of improvement. And with the Avant, we saw a market difference and uh, Professor Brown's view <clears throat> at the time and today is this is due to the unique mechanism of, of action and that is that uh, single anchorage point at the anterior um, coupled to the lowers and <clears throat> it has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has two effects. One, being coupled together in, in, by a single strap, it tends to hold the, the, the lower jaw more closed anyway. Um, but then second, you can still move further forward, either either just by sliding forward or opening and, and rotating forward. And that, we believe, keeps the patients comfortable. But when they do move, it, it's in a favorable direction, as opposed to counter-rotating the, the mandible in an unfavorable. Um, these the, Those early results have now played out into a second study with Professor Hookerman in Holland. Um, he's completed 22 patients and we have understudy, uh, we have a Sydney cohort as well. Um, and we have, uh, to my knowledge, we have another three sites now that are in various different randomized controlled trials. They're part way through, um, not published yet. As part of the, the evaluation, Lewis has um, got here on the screen, <clears throat> Everybody was, was given a feedback questionnaire, a very rigorous feedback questionnaire. Um, I had the opportunity as the R&D guy to ask Hello? very much R&D questions being, um, what's, what's your general first impression? Can you assemble the appliance? Uh, what do you like? What don't you like? And we asked that both of the clinician, the patient, um, even bed partners in, in general use. And what we see here is, <clears throat> excuse me, the, 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 the positives are distinctly linked to the size, comfort, ease of use, and, and the fitting um, right first time. And that seems to be what we have seen 
as as the data suggests here, you, consistent around the world. It, it seems as though from the user's first impressions, it's immediately that 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 right first time comfort and uh, and size. So again, I mean, if Dr. Born and um, Dr. Uh, Pagano see that, uh, does that resonate also for you in the clinic? So, so what I really appreciate about Somnomed is collecting scientific data. Um, all the other things about, you know, thinner are great. When I'm talking with my physicians, at the end of the day, they want to have some scientific backing to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And one, from a dental sleep medicine perspective, being able to cite the literature, I mean, that's just speaking the language of a physician. Um, knowing what's going to work, what's not going to work, and where you're going to put somebody to make sure you're going to get them managed. Um, I really appreciate Somnomed doing trials and looking at the actual effectiveness of their device. Um, that's something that I'm looking for when I'm looking for companies to work with uh, because that's something that my referring doctors are looking for. Um, if I have a treatment decision to make, I want to make it based on something scientific, not necessarily anecdotal. Um, we're doing a better, better job in dentistry collecting that evidence-based. Um, I think we can do even more. Um, so I'm excited to see where this is going to continue to go. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. And <clears throat> that, that is the basis of this company. When we started the company 16 years ago, it was, it, the distinct decision was we are to be a medical device company. And, and really what that's saying is, we must base our decisions on well-collected, rigorous, and objective data. And, and, and in the case of Avant, this was a distinct difference uh, for us before we launched the product. I mean, we, we had completed two trials um, and we were well in, on our way into the third. So essentially there's been um, no surprises uh, when, when we've gone to market. We haven't tested these things on our customers, so to speak. We've invited the customers to, to, to enjoy uh, the benefits of what we've been studying over, over a number of years. Like all products, uh, when we ask people what you don't like, there, were, there are things there. No, no product is perfect. Um, the, the initial dislikes, um, and again, remember these are initial things. We've got on the, the, the right-hand side there, the ER hooks. We, that's a, an acronym for elastic retention hooks. The reason that's high is um, in the initial studies, we were making the hooks um, so that they were actually a positive coming out into uh, the buccal sulcus. So it was, it was quite distinct. You could feel it. The patient could feel it. We've now optimized that on, on any of our you see commercially. You will be provided hooks that are sub-flush as standard. We put them on there whether you use them or not. Uh, that means the, you've got the option there. It doesn't cost any more money. Um, if you find that you have a patient and need it, you can engage it. If the patient doesn't want to use it, they can take it off. Um, the other feedback that we found was initially we didn't have particularly good um, instructions telling people how to assemble it and so on. So we got, we got some feedback that the assembly was difficult. Um, but those things have been resolved now. I mean, again, if, if Dr. Vaughan or Dr. Pagano. Yeah, I'd love to jump in on that. So we, um, obviously with COVID, we've all been kind of adapting um, on a daily basis to, to how we practice. Um, certainly, I, I think, or I hope, like everyone, um, we've seen our, our patients that we're bringing in dec decrease dramatically because we've chosen to do that um, because we think it's appropriate as, as, as we've all been told. And uh, having said that, we also want to make sure we've got that balance between uh, treatment of disease and when it's appropriate and when it's needed and how to keep everyone safe. And what we've appreciated with Avant um, is, is those patients that we have felt, um, you know, either, either we feel that way or our physicians have called us and said, no, this patient definitely needs to get treated now. Um, we can deliver it to them in their car. And what that looks like is, is literally we, we can give them the appliance uh, essentially hands free. Um, because the patient will be able to open the box, take the appliance out, put it in, try it, see if it works. Um, again, it's, it's fit every time. We haven't had to return any of them yet. Uh, for you know, We've done these deliveries in. And then they can have the appliance go home, and then we can telehealth the rest. 
Um, if there are questions, we can, we can get right in on FaceTime and see what's going on and, and help them. But honestly, we haven't run into that. Um, I don't have to sit there and prep them and explain to them where the arrows are to show them how to adjust it like I do on a Herc store to, to, to help them find all the keys in the, in the little compartments or whatever. It, it's just, here's the appliance. Um, put it together and, and, and you're good to go. Um, you know, the bands fit on one way. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a, a confusing process too much for the patient, which has been great. Yeah, and, and it comes with nice packaging. So, I mean, the patients get a nice booklet, um, color, high quality print that walks them through how to use the device. And there's a little diary in the back that they can write on to let them know what date they've changed their bands and kind of how they've been feeling with it. Um, when I'm treating patients, I don't really get too hung up on one single night. Um, sleep is incredibly complex, especially this time of year uh, with so many allergies going on and now sickness. Um, I can't judge how well somebody's sleeping based on one night. That's a little odd because that's how all sleep testing is done and the efficacy of these. Um, we're trying to change that workflow a little bit in our clinic. But I want my patients to have a full week of using the bands. And uh, it, it just seems to be very simple for somebody to go, all right, you're going to start at band zero, uh, go up to band three, really don't go past band four. I'm going to see you again in three weeks and check in and see how you're doing. Based on their feedback in that three-week visit, we'll say, okay, now I kind of want you to test bands four through six, and we'll be zeroing in on where's your kind of optimal sleep going to be. And we haven't had to do as much interaction as far as follow-up visits go um, with the Avant. Um, I have some other patients, for instance. I have some patients, um, some, you know, maybe older, may not have dexterity, may not, not have the vision that are in a Herbst. And, you know, they'll come in once a week or once every couple of days for us to adjust the appliances for them. Um, we haven't seen that as much with the Avant's. There is some bias there, though. Um, yeah, I mean, Medicare. I mean, it just, the sooner you guys get it on PDAC, the better, I think. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll let it, them decide that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things that I'm certainly am not going to stop grilling you guys on because um, it, it needs to be there. I mean, it, it. I don't understand why we have to use the most complicated appliances for our patients that, um, you know, many of them are fine with it, but if, if I've got a patient with a, you know, I mean, either a medical condition that's put them on, on Medicare um, or, or a different disability that has them on it, it, why are the Medicare appliances the hardest ones to use? Yeah. Um, it's, it's been wonderful in this time frame because, you know, like all of us, the last couple of weeks, we've had to radically change our practice. Um, I have, well, I don't know, probably... 60 to 75 patients right now that are in the follow-up phase um, that I don't have to worry as much that they are having really negative adverse effects to a device because the majority of them are in advance and are doing well. Um, we've implemented a lot of telehealth services in our clinic. We can do secure text messaging. We have portal messaging. We have telehealth here. Um, but just the ability to say, hey, go to band two from band one uh, has been very beneficial from a communication standpoint. Awesome, Dr. Pagano. As far as the quality of sleep um, and the patient surveys that were completed, upwards of 92%, as you can see on the screen of those patients, reported either good or great quality of sleep. And lastly, um, the product comfort statistics are here uh, for you to review as well. Chris or Eric, is there anything about these statistics that jumps out for you? Sure. Look, I think it's pretty self-explanatory here. When, when patients are asked at, at, at baseline, um, how, how would you describe the comfort? Um, they tended anywhere from you know, acceptable to comfortable, but it's quite clear that there's a shift from the baseline blue to the follow-up orange towards the comfortable and very comfortable. And, and this, again, this resonates with um, perhaps what, what, what we might expect in, in you know, any product that you're, you're becoming acclimatized to. I think what we've done is we've objectified it by collecting the data. We found that people are able to comply, they accept the treatment, 
they they liked the treatment and you know we we shifted the we shifted the curve if you will from from the middle here of, of acceptable up to becoming um very comfortable and, and in fact we have on a on a speed dial in sydney in our clinic a number of patients who at at the the end of that even halfway through the trial have been um, contacting us to say, have you got anything else you'd like us to evaluate? That's how, that's how favorable the, the response has been. And, and it's um, extremely rewarding when people are so engaged. No doubt. Let's wrap up this part of the presentation with a couple of, uh, of videos of some Avant deliveries before we get into our Q&A. Do I just put it all the, at once? Whole thing all, all in at once. Mm -hmm. uh, nope. Oh, <laughs> that mirror. Oh, I don't know. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. You did it. That was very good. And it stays. And it stays. <laughs> What's your first reaction? Uh, I guess I can feel it right here. Like, it feels secure. Mm hmm. Um, it doesn't hurt. I thought it was gonna hurt. Just maybe like pressure. But it feels good. I don't know. I don't know if my jaw, like if my jaw doesn't feel like overextended. Excellent. And I think I thought that it would be like outrageous. No, ma'am. But it's not. Not supposed to be. No, yeah, it's not bad. I feel like I could sleep in there. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. thank you. You're welcome. Patrick has been in a, what's that temporary tall? I can't remember the song. Alpha. Alpha. What do you mean? No, it was there. Sorry. Oh. So it's this way. Okay. So compared to your psalm Alpha, does it feel more comfortable? Yes. Do you feel like you have more tongue space? Yes. Does it feel like your jaw is in a happier position? Yes. And you can get your lips together so you can breathe through your nose? Yes. Can you sleep in this? You could be able to sleep in yes. it? Yes. Awesome. Smile for me. Smile for the camera. <laughs> Thank you. This is Scott. He's going to remove his Avant for the first time. Yes. Yeah. Getting it really fast. A little bit snug. Put your fingers all the way towards the back. And then kind of jiggle it down. Oh, perfect. There it is. Okay. Nice job. What do you think about it? Not bad. Not too bad. It feels a lot better than I thought it was going to feel. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, so this is Jeremy. He has been in a herbs appliance for how long? Uh, three years. Three years. Okay. And why are we switching? Um, well, originally I actually left my herbs in a hotel room, um, and so I thought I was going to be without an appliance, so I contacted you. Um, but they ended up sending me my herbs back, so I have it now. But um, primarily the metal in it... Um, I get, I'm really prone to canker sores, and so uh, it created some spots that I just kept getting chronic canker sores okay. from those po metal posts in there. Yeah. So I wanted something that was all plastic. Perfect. Okay, we'll go ahead and put right. it in. Let's see how easy it is for you. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> What's your initial thought? It's hard to talk, but it's very comfortable. Compared to the hearts? Yeah, it's much softer. Softer. More room, tongue space, you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It felt smaller, um, thinner. It felt lower profile, for sure. Yeah, yeah. okay, do that one more time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, everybody. I just received my new Somnomed uh, appliance, the Somnovent, Somnodent Avant, and I literally just put it in. Um, and this was my initial reaction, so I'm, I wanted. I said I should just make a video. Let's see what happens. Ready? This is it. My initial reaction. Wow. 
Wow. It's hard to talk in. <laughs> but my initial reaction was, wow, this is really, 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 really comfortable. Really comfortable. It's soft. You have movement. Wow. My first reaction was, wow, really comfortable. I can't wait to wear it tonight. <laughs> I love getting all the new appliances. <laughs> this is it. Huh. Really, really cool. We put it in again. Okay, so I'll populate it. That sounds good. All right, thank you. Wow. I appreciate Wow. That's really comfortable. <laughs> Tired to talk and no. <laughs> I like it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try it tonight. Uh-huh. Good morning. So, I never want to be part of the, the cool kids club, but here I am. Just got diagnosed. Need an appliance. Of course, this is the appliance I chose. Um, I haven't put it in yet. I wanted to do this um, for you guys and see how easy. Yeah, I've never worn an appliance. I've worn a night guard, but that's it. So... Here we go. I'm nervous. Hmm. Easy. Hmm. Can tell it's holding my jaw for sure. I'm pretty good. You can see from the side. sleep in this. Take it out. I have one hand. Hmm. We'll see. I'm sure a lot of you guys know Dr. Stacy Lehman and her business partner Lizia Crawford. Those last two, uh, those last two there that cracked me up. Um, John, let's let's open it up to questions and comments. Awesome, that sounds great. Um, I'm going to have Courtney on too. We have a lot of questions in the Q and A. Uh, I know, um, as Lewis predicted, we would have um, a lot of interest in in, uh, in the Avant and a lot of uh, in-depth questions. So, um, Courtney, are you on the line? I am, yeah, thank you guys. We'll uh, just, for, for all of you that have submitted questions, thank you. We'll get to just as many as possible, but if we're unable to get to your question during this live session, uh, don't worry, we will follow up with you via email with the uh, email address that you registered with. So uh, with that, let, let's jump right in. Um, so I think this, what, this question was um, uh, partially addressed in the chat box, but I think it would be good for uh, everybody that hasn't been in there to hear. Um, what, uh, we have a couple questions on the um, increments for the titration or calibration. Uh, what what's the reason behind the one millimeter versus maybe something uh, bigger or smaller? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, um, very good question. Um, the reason that we are using one millimeter incremental step differences is we had initially trialed smaller incremental steps and in this design using a single strap um, we had to balance the usability and the ability of somebody to understand which strap they're on with how many straps we supplied so the earlier i was talking about professor brahm and we did in fact <clears throat> initially supply uh 20 straps in, in the, the original study. And we, we, learned pretty, we learned pretty quickly that supplying somebody with a set of 20 straps was confusing. Um, in Europe, there's a, there's a huge thing about waste. 
and recycling. So they perceived that, well, if we're only going to use one strap, why are you giving me a whole kit with all this stuff that I'm going to have to recycle and not use? So, um, so the answer to the question is a balance between adjustability and not overwhelming the patient and clinicians for that, for that matter with packaging and straps. I think there's, there's certainly, um, we have had feedback and I see in the chat box questions, <clears throat> is it possible to have uh, smaller incremental steps? Um, the answer to that is uh, physically it would be possible. It would double the number of straps. If we, if we stay with the, the current design, for example, if you wanted a half millimeter, um, we could either double the number of straps or we could go back and look at the design um, to do some other things. Um, I'm the R&D guy, so I'm, I'm gonna let you uh, in, in on a little secret. We are, we are continuing to work on the design and uh, you should watch this space over the next 12 months um, for some further incremental improvements that will that will be related to um, adjustability and, and changing the step sizes um, that are available. So, so just to chime in there, um, I, I'm guessing <clears throat> one of the reasons it's one millimeter is the uh, AADSM has a paper for effective, what is an effective appliance and one millimeter titrations or less is part of that. But as I was kind of mentioning earlier, I don't necessarily think of the Avant as millimeter advancements. I think of it more as just the band advancement. Yes, the physical kind of properties of it on paper say it's gonna advance somebody one millimeter. In a clinical setting, I think sometimes uh, just due to the nature of the band, um, you may not get a full millimeter of advancement, especially as you start getting towards maximum protrusion and um, I have found, and this is when you're getting towards absolute maximum protrusion. I've had a couple cases where, you know, the patient does need a little bit more advancement, but they can't quite get into that next band. Uh, but I've been able to heat that up in warm water and kind of uh, advance the first couple of weeks in a couple of minutes. And uh, patients are able to close into the band then. And really what I'm looking for is the correct band for the patient after they've been in it for one to two weeks. Um, and once they're in the correct band where they're giving me the good subjective feedback, then let's get our objective testing. Um, as I was alluding to earlier, we, all this is based on these one night snapshots. Um, it's like making an absolute definitive uh, blood pressure or blood sugar determination off of one finger prick or one reading. Um, I hope we start getting into multi-night studies for efficacy um, where then we can try a couple different bands. Uh, that's what we want to be piloting in our practice and move towards. And I think that will help us continue to relay back to our physicians just kind of the highest quality practice. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. both. Um, uh, next question here, we actually have uh, a few different variations of this question, but a lot of interest in the uh, straps or bands. So uh, does it stretch over time like EMA bands? Um, will, will it deform over time for a Bruxer? Um, can you speak a little bit uh, about the, the straps and band? Sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, it's, a, it's a good question. And I, I understand the, uh, the reason and, and so on, given historical performance and, and the nature of what we're doing, wearing this all night, every night. Um, so all of the, all of the patients who have been enrolled through the uh, Sydney and Belgium studies are currently part of recalls that we are doing um, and we are in the process of doing as we speak. And part of those recalls involves us um, physically taking the strap back away from the patient, doing a bench top scan with the strap, uh, measuring the strap in CAD. Um, we, we, we draw a spline um, over the scan strap and we measure the length of that compared to baseline. Um, I, I can't give you the full, we're in the middle of this um, 
trial and study as we speak. But what, what we have been able to identify is in, in a proportion of patients and not all patients, um, there appears to be a multifactorial um, influence and impact on the straps. So do the straps stretch? What we have seen is in, in a, a subset of patients, um, the straps can stretch um, by about one to 2% of the, the overall length of the strap. Um, then there's an, uh, another subset of patients where the, the straps uh, absolutely do not stretch. But I think it's important to explain um, very briefly what the, what the material's made of and, and some of the things that um, Dr. Vaughan and, and Pagano have mentioned. The straps are made from what's called a polyamide. And this is a material that once it's molded, um, it's considered to be dry. And then when it's uh, in the environment, it ingresses or draws in moisture. So the initial moisture that it draws in would be um, saliva, it would be the storage conditions. If you store it in water, it would be any cleaning agents. And it's a known phenomenon of the material that it would um, increase its dimension by about one to two percent. The average strap length is, for argument's sake, around a hundred millimeters. So, so we're talking about uh, one to two percent on that. That phenomenon is something that we take into consideration when we are designing the appliances. We know that that's a phenomenon of the material, and we know that people are going to um, um, store it um, some wet, some dry and obviously they're gonna wear it in their mouth. So we account for that in your baseline um, setting when we are designing in CAD where the spline will go um, and what strap size is right for the given patient. Um, we take that into consideration. I think, um, you know, that's a, a very technical sort of answer. Perhaps um, Dr. Vaughan, you may have a, a clinical answer for what you've observed, you know, in, in actual practice. Yeah, so what, what I'm seeing, if you look at the straps, um, the shape of them, you can kind of see how they have that rectangular bend to them. Uh, there's kind of two hard angles here. And what we've been finding clinically is after the patients have been wearing it for, I don't know, one to two weeks, some kind of time period in there, we will see those angles kind of round off a little bit. So just the uh, geometry or trigonometry of that is going to change the mandible position. Um, but what we have found is there's initial change within kind of one to two weeks and then it stops. And that's where I'm kind of getting into, I, I'm not too concerned about the millimeter changes that we're doing. I'm more concerned on what's gonna be the correct band for you. Um, now, doing dental sleep medicine a long time, I've encountered plenty of patients where, you know, you do a sleep study at, we'll just say, you know, three millimeters of advancement, and they're having very significant apnea. You advance them a minor amount, a half a millimeter, a millimeter, and it seems to clear everything up. Um, I've also seen patients where you overshoot and, and things can go the opposite direction. I think that is more not as prevalent. Um, I think if you over protrude, more people are less susceptible to over protrusion um, than under protrusion. So with our clinic and our goal of being able to treat 100 patients per month, we want a system that can manage 80 to 90% of our patients very easily. So then if we find the 10 or 20% of patients that need more hand-holding, we can devote our specialty towards that group of patients while still helping out a tremendous amount of people. I mean, it's no different than composite material or amalgam. I mean, you, sure, there's, you know, spherical lathe cut, mixed amalgam, like, yeah, you can run all of those and, and try and line them all up. And there are many dentists that are much better than me that, that do that for their patients. Um, but but in, for the most part, I think we have kind of the goal of, of most patients fit here, and then there are those extreme cases where they don't. And part of that is finding it. And, and I'll say this is the, the risk of a newer appliance is some of those things we don't know yet what it's the right answer. 
um, kind of go into that clinical evidence or, or discussion you were saying. I have one patient where we're, we're moving her along and, and she, and of course, like all things, it's always the like close friend of a referral source. They're, they're always the patients that have issues. Um, but she's, she's moving along and, and not getting better. Um, and, and, you know, I'm talking her through it like I do all my patients and we, we kind of move through and, and we're, we're now to a point where it's like, okay, you should have improved. And finally, I'm sitting down at that point and, and, and really doing, I would say, a more thorough look and, and noticing that, yeah, the bands are conforming too quickly on her, or, or not necessarily too quickly, but they're conforming to the point that she's not advancing despite her smaller band. Um, and, and that's kind of the point where then you're like, okay, why is that? And we looked, you know, again, looking at it, and, and she's an extreme case of a V-arch where I'll kind of show you her records here. I mean, it, she comes to a point in the anterior. I mean, it, it is just literally a, a case where kind of initially I didn't think, oh, that'd be an issue. And then we realized, okay, no, because of that shape of the arch, we ran into a problem with her. Now we, we were able to fix that. Um, we honestly, in this case, by just using the shorter straps, um, she, I think she was in medium straps and we went to, to small straps. Um, and that's something that, that, you know, we call up Eric and say, Hey, Eric, here's the case. And he kind of knew immediately what the issue was once he pulled it up. Um, and, and just right away, we, we had an answer. Um, so you'll certainly have some of those cases where it's just kind of a see, see what it is. But the, the nice thing is that, again, we kind of are able to customize it and fit it that way by just changing straps, um, which we've enjoyed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, second part of that question was um, about the changing of the band. So it, do they need to replace them or anything like that? Chris or Von and Bagano, have you guys ever seen any, dent, any patients needing to just replace straps frequently? So the, because of a break, are you saying? No, just a question in the box. They want to know how often do they replace? So, for example, like EMA, that because they bend and stretch so much, you have to replace those. Have you guys had to do anything like that? So time will tell. So right now, I mean, our, our longest standing patient is just at like six or seven months. Um, yeah. And to answer that question right now, we have not replaced any straps due to stretching or breaking. Um, we're going to be over the next couple of months here, hopefully, um, going to be able to collect a lot of patients. Uh, we're going to be scanning all of our patients at six months. So we're, we're going to get a lot of good data from that. And we have not had to replace any straps due to breakage yet. Yeah. It, well, we've had a couple where there were dogs eating them, They've, yeah. dog broken, but, but not, not normal use. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the three yeah and, and I'd just like to add, um, I'm available on Facebook as well. Um, anybody has any questions, absolutely feel free to friend me, send me messages. Um, we answer those all the time. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, next question here. We've got a couple questions from our uh, um, Canadian viewers, is Avant available in Canada? Yes, it is. Great. That was a nice quick one. Now, here's another uh, hot topic. We've heard it mentioned a, a few times throughout the webinar, but uh, what about what about PDAC approval? Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with PDAC, uh, Medicare and um, certain other commercial payers are requiring that the appliance is what is called PDAC approved to be billed under the code for custom made sleep appliances E0486. Uh, what, what's that looking like at this time? Yeah, absolutely. So first I'm gonna shout out to our global quality officer because I know she's on the line. Doreen, I know you're out there. Um, Yes, look, it's a process that we have to do on our side. And um, look, it, it's a very rigorous, as you guys, if you are familiar with it, there's a seven bullet point criteria that we have to meet uh, past devices uh, that have straps and other interlocking mechanisms have not had the greatest success. Um, but I'll put it this way, challenge you on Facebook and send us a, a, what your opinion is about Avant and if it should PDAC approved because uh, we have mixed opinions, so I'd love to get the viewers' feedback on Facebook so we can kind of get some feedback. I mean, the most recent approval from PDAC is uh, something with a separable band on the sides. 
So, I mean, it, it, things may be changing at PDAC. In my opinion, it does fit the criteria right now. Um, you're absolutely correct. The last few years, there have not been any banded type of devices like this approved through PDAC. Um, but I think that changed about two months ago when there was one approved. And uh, when PDAC's changed. When so PDAC's PDAC, changed. The, the company running PDAC changed this year. Yep. So we'll see. Great. Thank you, guys. And sorry, a, a quick uh, follow up to the availability of the Avant. Is it available in Europe? Yes, indeed. It is available right throughout Europe. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, guys. We'll do just a couple more questions here. I know there's still a ton of questions in the chat box, but, uh, you know, we'll get through just as many as possible. Um, we've got several questions uh, relating to the uh, inner soft liner. Um, is it milled? Um, how is the inner layer, excuse me, inner layer bonded to the outer um, MMA layer uh, to avoid debonding? Can you talk a little bit more about that soft liner? Yeah, sure. Um, so, absolutely, the, the the soft line material is called um, SMH B Flex, or for short B Flex. That's a proprietary material developed and owned by Somnomed. It's completely unique in dentistry, and to my knowledge, um, in in the material science world, where we have um, created a, a an elastomer or a rubbery type material that has a chemical bond, a, a chemical bond at the interface with the hard material. So the, the chemistry behind that is that it's a, a, an MMA or a monomer methyl methacrylate uh, material and the hard polymer of um, begins as a solid block, uh, like you see any uh, very common 98 millimeter um, resin block and what we do is we when we design the, the appliance in CAD the very first thing that we do is we create a one millimeter spacer over the, the patient's teeth and it is that spacer that we go into the round block and we mill out a cavity so we create a void within that block and we then come along with the B-flex material and we, through a proprietary process, again, totally developed in-house, we press this material into the cavity. That forms, and it's, it's a, it's kind of has, it kind of has a, um, almost like a chewing gum type um, tactility to it before it's cured. We take that, that disc while it's, while it is still within the blank holder, we take that whole thing and we put that inside of a pressure vessel at 95 degrees and we cure that material for a couple of hours. So it's a heat packed and processed material with all of the benefits that you get with that. So that is if, you, if, if you've ever worked with uh, thermo formed or pressure formed materials, um, they're very fast, they're, they're ch relatively cheap and they're easy to use, but they suffer from uh, all of the known challenges. They delaminate, they discolor, they have a, they require a bonding agent at the interface between the hard and the soft. Uh, the moment that you go and heat the material, you're um, destroying the properties that you're actually setting out to keep when you're thermoforming. So we didn't, we, we wouldn't accept that. We, we developed a heat polymerized elastomer that has a chemical bond at the interface between the hard and the soft material. And we went to the effort to heat polymerize that for two hours. We take that back out of the pressure vessel, it goes back onto the milling machine and we perform a secondary, uh, more precise, more fine machining process. Um, again, that process is completely unique. Uh, we had to develop it from scratch. We worked with, with, it, with colleagues in Germany um, on custom made cutters for the milling process, custom made, um, polymerization process and we had to I mean mi you can imagine trying to mill chewing gum is is a rather uh, challenging process to get uh, um, uh, down to the level of precision but that's what we did and I and that's why 
um, customers get a right first time comfortable fitting. If you if you saw those videos, which I hadn't seen by the way, that it's quite uh, quite rewarding to watch people able to, to to put the appliance straight in their mouth uh, without any interaction. Um, essentially, it's the B-flex material with its properties and the machining processes that we've developed um, that that are permitting and facilitating that to happen. And so clinically, what we've been seeing is. Um, the B-flex material will pick up some amalgam staining if patients have silver fillings in their teeth. Um, what I like about the Avant is it's stored dried. Um, all of these things, and this goes across any device, you got to tell your patients you got to keep these clean. Yeah. Uh, you got to keep your mouth clean. You got to keep your, your device clean. Um, if you do a good job at that, they'll stay clean. If you do a, a bad job at that, it, it, you know, it'll, it'll get nasty just like anything else. Um, overall, um, again, we're only about six or seven months into our longest patients. We haven't seen any delaminations from an Avant yet. We have seen some other Somnomed devices that have delaminated, um, but those are usually at year five to seven. Um, Do they have B-Flex? Yeah. Oh. I, I, if you were using B-Flex seven years ago, you guys can answer that better. Um, and I'm sure their, their chemistry has changed since then. Um, we have not had any delaminations of any yet. Um, as far as the other concerns with the soft liner, I'm really excited these next couple months because one of the big criticisms of soft liners is you're going to get tooth movement. Um, initially, I'm not aware of any of our patients opening up any diastemas or having any significant tooth movements that we're aware of? Other than, other than terminal molars. I've had a couple where terminal molars have, have opened up okay. in general, but it, no different than any other appliance that doesn't wrap. And I think you guys can talk whether or not the Avant can or, or, or doesn't. I know it can wrap. Uh, I just don't know if you guys have rolled that out as a, as a general possibility. But other than kind of that issue, I haven't seen anything with soft liners. And we, every six months, or I guess I should say at the six month appointment, follow up from delivery, we do a scan on the patients to compare to their original um, and then annual from there on out. And so it's, it's certainly not scientific uh, and rigorous like, like if we're doing a, a study on it, but we're doing our own internal kind of monitoring on patients. And other than terminal molars, I haven't seen um, individual tooth. Yes, yeah, so I'm excited. We started this about six months ago with all of our scans for our records. We take a uh, MI record of just kind of the patients, um, where they feel the most comfortable bite is, that their teeth come together. We copy the case and then we get a protrusive record and that's what we send in. Um, so I'm excited to be regathering those data to see how the patient's MI record looks after six months in an event and also kind of where is their protrusion that they found to be living at compared to where we started them initially. Yeah, and I've got patients from uh, past clinics that we have digital records on that we're yeah. looking at it at years two, three um, in soft, hard, you know, and you name the appliance, I've probably got a patient that's worn it and we can compare against it. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I, I haven't seen movement in hardly any appliance except for, um, you know, some of our appliances that are, are, are maybe more famous for with thermoplastic materials and things like that. Yeah. And I don't want those minor movements to, to, to scare anybody that the, the awesome thing about dentistry right now is all of these unique tools we have available to us. Um, so even if there's something like a minor, you know, terminal opening, if that's a concern, um, today it's really easy to take that digital scan uh, and close that digitally, print the model and make the patient uh, Essex or something that can get that molar in the correct position again, if you're concerned with that. Um, 3D printing is awesome. Uh, if you're not doing any of that yet, look into it. But um, we're, we're not afraid of any of those. And as you open up your clinic to more of those tools, uh, your patients won't be concerned with them either. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, next one, we have uh, several uh, variations of this question uh, is related to the adaptability or um, you know, adjustment for new restorative work. Let's say the patient gets a new crown. Uh, what does the process look like to 
adjust or adapt the appliance to, you know, changes to the dentition like that. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, where, look, where I think we, we covered a little bit um, earlier, I think it was uh, Dr. Vaughan was, was talking about using a, a scotch bright style brush if you need to make any minor adjustments on the fitting surface um, of the appliance, which is the B-Flex, that's absolutely the right tool to use. Um, they come in various different forms and, and yeah, he's holding those up right now. We'll try and get you the, the, the US supplier details. I did, if you look in the answered questions towards the top, there's a link to Henry Shine for- oh, Okay, the, perfect. Um, so you can perfect. go right there and it's same, it's made by Keystone, so you can look yeah. them up in Patterson or Benco too, I'm sure. And those, we're just using um, a straight nose cone, um, lab hand piece, um, usually 10 to 20,000 RPM. Yeah, 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 exactly. So for, my, for minor adjustments, um, that's definitely something that you can do. If, uh, like any other appliance, if there is for some reason you're, uh, you believe that the patient is likely to get a, a crown uh, or a bridge replacement, but they're, they're not in a position to do it right now, you can ask us to um, create a small uh, a space, if you will, um, around an individual tooth. We can design that in at the time of CAD designing, um, just like you know, with any other appliance. Um, or alternatively, if, if this is something that occurs after the appliance has been made, so let's say uh, that they've had the appliance a couple of years and they need to get a restoration. Um, what, is, what is possible and, and the advantage of, of digital is we have a complete record of what you have sent to us two years ago. And what we can do is we can look, you can say to us, look, we need to do a three unit bridge on uh, the lower left-hand side, guys, what do I need to do? The answer there is do your bridge, rescan the, the, the lower arch, send us that lower arch scan. You don't need to do a whole new bite. You don't need to do the upper. We can actually fabricate for you just the lower arch and we will make that. Um, and, and the way that we do that is the upper arch and the lower arch the only part that's changed over those two years is, is one small section over here. If you send us that whole new uh, lower arch, we're able to go and take that and we do what's called a, um, uh, it's, it's a 3D reconstruction or a fit match. So we snap fit all of the unchanged areas of the arch back into the original bite record that you've supplied to us. And then we can see the areas that's changed. And we just go and make a, uh, a new, uh, a new lo lower arch. We send that back to you, and and that'll uh, that'll fit straight in. It'll be using the assuming that everything has fitted nicely um, at your baseline first appliance. We'll use the exact same bite record. Send you a lower arch. You can just switch out the old one and, and put in the new one. So this is something that happens in our clinic quite a bit. So we're um, dental sleep medicine, oral facial pain only. We don't do any general dentistry. Um, it's, it's not unusual for a patient to come to us referred from their physician, either in a temporary crown or a, you know, a tooth that's broken that's about to be crowned. Kind of our rule is, and, and rule I say guideline, is if the patient's scheduled to have it done, then we will kind of put their case on hold. We'll scan them. Then they'll return as soon as that new crown is cemented. And we'll just rescan that one crown, then send it into Somnomed um, or whichever lab we're using. If the patient is, isn't going to get that taken care of, but they have significant um, health issues related to their sleep apnea, and we need to get them into treatment, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the, the huge advantage of digital is just this. You can plan for what you're going to be doing ahead of time. Um, a single crown, you know, it's very simple to send your lab uh, the CAD file of what the tooth looked like before and have them make a crown to what it was. Um, anything over, you know, three units, I would probably be looking to get a new device, uh, whether that's just an arch or a completely new device. 
And then, while yes, all of that, you know, matching is great. It would probably be my clinical recommendation that if you're going to get a new device, as easy as digital records are nowadays, let's just keep it simple. Let's just get all new digital records and, and, and fabricate the device that way and, and give it to the lab and let them decide. Um, I, I would prefer if I'm making something new, it made on the most current records. Right. Well, and, and not only that, like we said earlier, this is... <clears throat> The, the mindset we have to work ourselves out of is the dental mindset, right? We're used to dental insurances and, and, and care that is, you know, a prepaid plan essentially in the dental, right? You get two exams, you get uh, two propies and, and this much, you know, rest and you're done. When we're treating medical conditions, you treat medical need. And, and it, depending on, you know, the, you get into specifics on that there with insurances, but in general, if the patient has a, a, an alteration to their body, then insurance a lot of times will cover a new appliance because there's a medical need for a new appliance. Just like if a patient's ears change, you know, or, or I shouldn't say that, like their eyes change, uh, insurance is going to cover a new pair of glasses on their, med on their, their vision insurance. If something changes, uh, you know, they get plastic surgery, they're going to get a new face mask for their CPAP. Why are we acting like uh, dental appliances are any different when we're treating a medical condition. So a lot of times we go down that route. Now, if you're not doing medical insurance, that's a whole different story, but, but that's our practice is you treat the patient for what the patient needs. And if they have adjusted their, uh, what the appliance fits to for, for lack of better description, description, then they need a new appliance to fit that. Um, and, and most of the time that's not a difficult process to go through. Um, certainly, Nearman can help you with that. I mean, that's that's where they exist and, and, and do phenomenal work um, if you're going down that route. With that said, um, minor fillings, not an issue. Yeah. And most of the time we don't even, the patient doesn't even notice a difference to their fit. Uh, a new crown, um, it's kind of up in the air whether or not you'll need to do some adjustments. Um, once you start getting over three units, you're probably going to have to adjust something. Um, more than that, you really need to reconsider the medical needs of the patient, as Dr. Vaughn was saying, in my opinion. Great. Th thank you all so much. This has been such a, a wonderful session. Lots of uh, great info, lots of great questions asked and answered. So uh, thank you, Drs. Vaughn and Pagano, Chris, Lewis, Eric. Um, we really appreciate taking the time. And um, I think John has a, a couple closing words. Well, I just, uh, you know, just as you said, Courtney, thank you all so much. Um, what a, a great panel we had today and so much great information. Thank you all for joining us. If you had questions um, that were not answered, I think we've answered most all the questions, but we'll be sure to follow up. We also have been recording this session and we've had a couple questions on that. So we will be sending everybody um, the recording so you can go back and watch it and pick up anything that you may have uh, missed. And um, we really appreciate our partners at Somnomed. Um, it's uh, you know a, a really, really great appliance, the Avant. We've heard so many great things. And we appreciate um, you all sharing more information about it today. Any, any final words, uh, Lewis, before we close out? No, just a huge thanks to you guys. Huge thanks to our team and a, a, especially uh, Drs. Pagano and Vaughn for uh, for joining us today, for Chris, uh, to Chris Bedford for getting up so early and and uh, sharing your expertise with us. Most importantly, everybody who's on the call who was interested enough to spend, geez, almost two hours here uh, learning about what is uh, what's new in, in dental sleep oral device design. So from everybody at Somnomed, thank you, thank you very much. Awesome, yeah, thank you, Doctors Pagano, Doctor Bond. Really appreciate the insights there, Chris. Thank you so much. And uh, as Dr. Vaughn mentioned, if anyone does have any medical billing um, questions or looking for solutions, that is um, your in practice management's bread and butter of our, uh, our, our solutions. We have the dental writer software. We have our Nearman medical billing services. We have our new Nearman CE plus online courses for getting into medical billing. We had a, a couple questions on that. So just want to let you guys know about that. And uh, thank you all so much. We'll see you on another webinar or 
when everything uh, gets a little more normal again at, at one of the industry events. Can't come soon enough. Thanks, uh, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good Bye. day. Stay safe, stay healthy.